Let's take a look at the April 2017 SAT exam. And from this, we're gonna be taking a look at section four, question numbers 29 and 30, which you will have your calculator available for you. Um, starting with number 29 here, it says, Thomas is making a sign in the shape of a regular hexagon with four inch sides. He will cut out from the rectangular sheet of metal as shown in the figure above. What is the sum of the areas of the four triangles that will be removed from the rectangle here. All right, when you're on the SAT and you get one of these hexagon shapes, one of the first things I always suggest doing is dividing it up um, by drawing in diagonals straight across. Okay, so I'm gonna draw these diagonals straight across so that we form six congruent triangles there. Okay, well, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out what the central angle here would be. Well, we know if we went all the way around in a full circle, that'd be 360 degrees. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six angles there. So to start this, we're just gonna do 360 divided by six to figure out that each angle is 60 degrees. Okay, so I know this X here is gonna be 60 degrees. Now we can see, okay, if this is the center of the circle and this is a regular hexagon, uh, then we know that all this, these two sides have to be the same. And if we know that those two sides are the same, that means it's at least an isosceles triangle. And if the two sides are the same, also then the base angles have to be the same. So they would both have to be 60 here. And actually I should show you how I came up with that. Um, if I label these both, um, you know, we used X before, let's use Y now. If I label these both Y, well then I know two Y's plus 60 in a triangle, we know that's 180 degrees. So if I minus off 60 here, we get 2y is equal to 120, and then simply just divide by 2, and you'll get that y is equal to 60 as well. All right, so going back to my picture here, I know that these two angles are also 60 degrees. Okay, I'm going to take this triangle, I'm just going to redraw it out here. So this triangle, and I'm going to flip it around. So we know the two base angles there are gonna be 60 degrees, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this line straight down from the center here, straight down. So if that top vertex angle was 60, then each one of these sides now is going to be 30 degrees, okay? We also knew that the whole bottom here was four. So what I've just done is I've drawn in this altitude, when you draw the altitude of um, an equilateral triangle, it's also the same thing as drawing the median, which means the two sides here are gonna be equal. So if the whole thing is four, we're gonna get two and two for each side. All right, so now that I have those two sides of the triangles, this is actually a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So there's two things you could do. Um, one, you could use Sokotoa and solve for um, the height of this triangle here. And that would be fine. You could use either 30 or the 60 there. Um, you could even use law of signs if you really wanted to. But the easiest thing to do, in my opinion, would actually be to use the rules from a 30, 60, 90 triangle, which they give to you on this test. So let me pull those up here. Okay, so let me pull this up here. So I just copied this straight off of the reference table, okay, for a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So what you can see about this is across from the 30 degrees is X. So across from 30, we would consider this to be X, okay? The hypotenuse is twice X. So the hypotenuse would be four, which we already knew because it's an equilateral triangle. And then across from the 60 is X radical three. So if X is two here, then our H would be two radical three. Okay, so if I go back to my main picture here, and this is getting a little crammed, this height okay, is two radical three, which you could see is the same thing as this height over here of that triangle that we're cutting out. So that's two radical three. All right, um, and then we could kind of just fill the rest of this in here with my picture. Okay, so if I continued on, if I just draw this line, so if this was 30, Again, we also know this triangle is 60, 60, 60. 
which makes this one uh, 30, 90, and then, uh, I'm sorry, here, 30. Let's make that more readable. Okay, and then um, this would also be 60 here. Okay, so same thing. If that's 2 rad 3, then this has to be a 2 over here. So if we're taking out the area of those triangles here, well, the area of a triangle we know is half the base times the height. Okay, well, I just found out that the base of that triangle is 2, and the height of the triangle is 2 radical 3. So the area of that triangle then is half of 2 is just 1, so we're just left with 2 radical 3. And since there's 1, 2, 3, 4 triangles that we're taking out here, we're just going to do 4 times 2 radical 3 to get the 8 radical 3 that we're going to be removing. So that's why it's going to be choice A here. All right, let's take a look at the next one, which is number 30. So it says, um, which of the following equations describes a circle with a radius of 10 that passes through the origin uh, when it's graphed in the xy plane? Okay, so there's a few things that we can do here. First, you should know the equation of a circle. And the equation of a circle looks like x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. So if I know right away that the radius is 10, then out here this would be 10 squared. So I know that that's 100. So it has to be equal to 100, which means I can eliminate a right off the bat. Okay, now the easiest way in my opinion to approach this is it says it passes through the origin. Well, the origin is just that point zero, zero. We could literally just test it out and see which equation works. So if I went to b, 0 minus 5, okay, if I put in 0, 0 minus 5 would be negative 5, negative 5 squared would be 25, plus 0 plus 5 would be 5 squared is 25. But 25 plus 25 does not equal 100. That's only 50, so that would be out. And then I can go to choice C here, because they would say, okay, 0 minus 10 would be negative 10, negative 10 squared is 100, okay, plus 0 minus 10, negative 10 squared is another 100, but 100 plus 100 does not equal 100, okay, it equals 200, so that would be out. So by default, I know it has to be D here, but let's just prove this to you here. Okay, so if you put in 0 here, you get negative 5 radical 2 squared plus 0 plus 5 radical 2 squared, so 5 radical 2 squared. And we want to see, does that equal 100? Well, if I did this out, 5 squared would be 25. Okay, radical 2 squared would be 2. 5 squared is 25. Radical 2 squared is 2. 25 times 2 is 50. 50 plus 50, that does equal 100. So you can get your answer pretty easily by just putting the point that they gave you into your equations.